Hi, this is Bob and Pam with Blue Ridge Honey Company. Today we'd like to show you how we make our candles. We sell quite a few of them. Pamela makes them. She's good at it, so I'm going to let her explain the process. So we're going to start off today by going over our supply list. Um, you will, of course, need your candle molds and your beeswax, um, something to melt it in. We use a wax melter here with our large production. At home, you'll probably want to use a turkey roaster or a double boiler, both work be uh, good. And then we have our bold release spray. And then we have our wicks. Now our wicks are always going to be square braided. For the beeswax, the high temperature uh, or melting point has to have the square braided wicks. So we have a two and we have a six. and they call, we usually call them number two and number six, but when we order them, sometimes they have them on the item number as like two slash O or six slash O. Um, so just be aware of that when you go to order some. We have rubber bands. We have needle nose pliers. You'll see why they, these come in handy later. We have wire cutters. You can also use cuticle cutters. Um, a pair of scissors. Our wicking needle. We have our craft sticks and bobby pins, parchment paper to line the, pa the table with. It's great for releasing the wax if you make any kind of messes. And we also have our flower cloth. These are large cloths. So you can cut them into squares here to put over your pouring pot. This is what the inside of the candle wax melter looks like before we turn it on in the morning. It usually takes around an hour or so to heat up enough to start pouring candles. For checking the wax temperature, we use a food grade thermometer like the kind you might use for checking meat or poultry temperature. We like the temperature to be around 165 degrees. If the wax is too hot, it will create sink holes in your candles and tiny bubbles throughout the candle. Pouring the wax too hot can also damage your molds. If the wax is too cold, it will create sink holes and you just will not have a well-made candle. This is our big wax melter we use to melt down and filter comb cappings, which we turn into blocks that we use to make our candles. Now we are going to go over a demonstration of how we put our wicks in our molds. And this is where the needle nose pliers come in handy. So we are going to start, we're, I'm going to show you how we set it up on our bench here. And it's something you can do, it's a great idea if you have, like if you're making them in your kitchen, you can put the wicks up on your cabinets so that, you know, you have your wick pulled tight. So it's great to so say you know this way, and I'll show you another way as well. So you're going to insert the wick into the wicking needle and into the mold. Then you will want it, want to, take these pliers and pull the wick through. When you pull it through, you want to make sure that you pull it through where you have enough for your wick on the other side. And usually you want about a quarter inch of wick sticking out. And then we are going to just hold this here while we put these rubber bands around it. When you put these rubber bands around, they are actually what seals the, the mold so that we don't have any cracks in our mold when we make our candle. And when you do this, you want to be sure to line, see so you have the, cr the creases here. You, if you leave it like that, you will have that in your candle and it will not be attractive. So you want to make sure to line the mold up where you have, you don't have any lines in it. It will be, you know, a great candle when you get finished. So then we will set it down and pull our wick up and wrap it around or if you're in your kitchen, you will tape it to your kitchen cabinet or whatever you have to pull your wicks up. Okay, this way, we will, I will show you how to do it. If you don't want to pull it up to your cabinet, there's an easier way, and this is where the craft sticks and the bobby pins come in handy. Okay, usually if you have the, the size two wick would go in anything under three inches in diameter, um, and the six would go anything above three inches. See, this is three inches on the biggest part of the candle. So you will want a size six wick. We will get that here. Okay. We want a little extra on both sides, some for your wick, some for where you're going to hold it with your bobby pins. So you're going to kind of measure and put a little extra on each side. Okay. 
to find your hole in your mold and pull this through. Again, you want to line it up where you have like a quarter inch sticking out on the bottom. You have plenty sticking out here. So you, something about the larger candles with a lot of detail, you don't want to put them too tight or it could um, mess up the design of your mold. So you want to make sure it's tight enough to seal it, but not so tight that it misshapes it. I'm going to put that all the way up. Okay, so if I don't want to put it on the stick or on the kitchen cabinet, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these craft sticks and set it on the top of my mold. I don't want it over the um, where I pour the wax in because that will make it complicated to pour, but it may also put lines in your candles when you go to release them. So we're going to put it on the sides of each hole. And this allows it to rise up where your bobby pin is not sticking down you know where your candle your wax is going to pour to so it, it rises it up so you have enough room in between where it will not leave that mark so you're going to put your bobby pin on slide it tight make sure that inside the mold it's really tight and lined up in the center and you also have enough room to pour here so that's another way you can pour them at home now that the molds are set up it is time to set up our pouring cup and pour our wax and start pouring our candles so to start off, we have our flower sack cloths. You can get these, I think they're a five pack for like five or 550 at Walmart. They're rather large. This is only half of one where I've been using it. So um, they're, they're large cloths and they go a long way. When you cut the squares out of them um, and then use them over and over, they're really a money saver. So we already have our one of our squares cut out and some people, some people will take their cloth and just kind of lay it over their pouring cup and pour their wax. Um, me personally, I like to take my square and make it secure. I just feel better about it um, being that way. And then we're gonna pour our wax. We have checked it already. It is at the right temperature in between 155 degrees to 165 degrees and we're gonna do, do it this way with our melt our wax melter but if you're at home doing the turkey roaster you actually will have to dip have a dipping cup to pour into your pouring cup um, but you will have the same effect it's a good thing about this pouring cup is we can get a lot in one one canister and we can so we can pour several large candles with doing the quantity that we need to um, it makes it easier for us a uh, large measuring cup, cup will work out great for at home in the kitchen okay here you can see where we the wax has went through the flower cloth and it has caught a little bit of the debris even though we filter our wax, the debris can still get through from time to time. Or, you know, it could be in your container. So you want to make sure to always check that or have the cloth to catch the debris. Now we are going to use the spray. This is a mold release spray. You want to give a light coat in each of your molds just to make sure that all of your details will turn out really good uh, and, and the mold won't stick to your, the wax. I like to spray it in rows as I go. Um, if you're doing a few, you might want to just give it a spray with each one that you pour. Now it is time to start pouring. When you pour, you want to pour to towards the center of the wick. You don't want it on the edge. It will leave a line on your candle and you don't want to pour too, too fast. It could cause bubbles in your candle as well as being too hot will cause sinkholes and bubbles. So just steadily pour towards the center of your mold. We came to the edge and stopped. You do not want these to cool too fast. That could also cause it to do the sinkholes.
Now that we've finished pouring the candles, we are going to let them set for, for about 30 to 45 minutes and come back and check on them to start the release process. Now we are going to release the candles and they have cooled for a little bit. Some of them we will not be able to um, release or take completely out of the mold just due to them being bigger and having more wax in them and pouring them later than we did earlier. These are the ones we started with. And to release the mold, you're actually going to remove the rubber bands from, from the mold. And you're also going to trim these bottom wicks. And remember, you're pouring them. The top is actually at the bottom, and the bottom's on the top. We are going to trim it all the way to the edge of the candle. You try to get as small or as close to the surface as you can. And then we are going to pull the rubber bands. And then you want to it will automatically be loose, but if it's kind of sticking, make sure you kind of pull it apart and release it from the mold. And these we have the votives. I took two out already. Um, you would remove the sticks that we had there. Then you would remove the bobby pins. And then these votives are actually easier to pull right out from the bottom. You have them here. So after you have those out, we are going to trim these wicks. You can see where I didn't get this one trimmed enough, so it's all crooked and not balanced. So we can go back and trim it more. Another thing is, sometimes when you have the uh, mistakes in your candles, you will want to use a hot plate to kind of smooth them over. Make sure they will sit level. And here is another. And this is all the process of releasing the candles. See where it comes apart? You can see where this one is actually so white in the, in the color. And you can tell how these are already turning, you know, more of the natural color. When it's cool, the beeswax is cool and hardened. So it's like when they're like this, you can actually pull them out. When they're like this, that's a good sign that you should leave it in the mold to cool longer. Um, this one is actually ready now. With it being smaller and the mold is so loose, you can actually pull it out. And th to, to pull it out of the mold, you will gently, you'll pull it apart and gently just bring it up and you have your candle. And actually, see, you can see this one, I had a little bit too much of the wick. So you want to trim that one to about a quarter of an inch. If you have your wick too long or too short, it will not burn properly. But there you have your candle. We will come back in about a half an hour and start releasing and pulling the other candles from their molds. You can see all the candles that we've made today. They are, have all been taken out of the molds except for these few. These were large and they were still too warm when I was taking them out. So a trick I have learned is to get just a simple clothespin and to set it between, you know, in your creases or your splits in your molds. Uh, that allows more air to get to them so they can cool a little bit faster because they were, they were cool up here, but down inside the mold, they were still too warm to take out. So this, I've just learned this trick to help cool them a little bit faster. And earlier we mentioned about uh, the candles that weren't level, and I'm sure you could, you've noticed these, this one laying over and this one kind of crooked. So we have our hot plate here. And here I have actually made up parch or folded parchment paper uh, so that it pins the wax inside of it. After it dries, you can see how easy it is to take off and you can throw it back into your melter and reuse it so you have none wasted. Speaking of waste, um, you can actually see this is my trash pile from our wicks. Um, this is the only bit of trash that I had out of the whole bench that we set up. And you're asking, if, you, if you're wondering what this is, this is actually the wick, you, how we had them tied up. You can see here, when we start running out of the wick, all we do is tie another one on here. So we keep dragging it down and so the only thing you have is just this last bit in this tie and that's what these are. 
And so it's wonderful the way we've designed this bench to allow us to be efficient with our materials. And so now I will show you how we level our candles. Okay, you can see how some of these candles are not, see how wobbly that is? Um, and how this one is laying down because it actually will not stand up. Um, if you have this problem at home, use your hot plate. Uh, you can actually just run the candle. You can see which way it's leaning more. So you want to kind of push it towards there. So you want to run it along this hot plate and just kind of let it melt that side down and make your candle level. And a level candle does make a difference in burning, the can in burning it. We are going to do that and push it down on the parchment paper. Lift it up, you have a level bottom. And you can also see that it is sitting flat and it's like you need it. This one's a little bit worse. So we're going to run it along. And there you have your flat, your level candle. Now that we've finished here, we are actually going to take them to the store and package them there and place them on the shelf. Now that the candles are finished, we've brought them up front to be packaged. And to package them, we actually we use uh, these packaging bags. One we get from Uline, one we get from Hamper House in Atlanta. We also always put these labels on them with some interesting information in the middle and always a warning label on the back. And the string that we use to tie them off is the raffia. You can actually purchase this at Walmart. And uh, that wraps easily around the candles. See, you can see the little ones we have tied off at the top. The bigger ones we tie around the middle. And that is all for our candle making. I hope that this video has helped you uh, make candles at home.